keyword of this video is ethical hacking course. But in reality, it's just an expansive video on the fundamentals of ethical hacking. There is no such thing as an ethical hacking course, to be honest, because no course can teach you a discipline like ethical hacking. All the best that you can do in creating content for ethical hacking is that you can tell people about the fundamentals that are followed in this discipline. Okay, now before we start, let me just give you a general idea of the topics that I intend to cover throughout this video. Okay, now to be honest, we're gonna cover a pretty broad range of material. We are firstly gonna be going over footprinting and reconnaissance, where you get an idea of what's involved in the ethical hacking engagement that you're working on and information about the target that you're engaged with. Then we're gonna talk about networking fundamentals and here we're gonna get our hands dirty with packets and the understanding of TCP IP at a deeper level and also understanding how the different protocols work and why they work that way. Now, we are also gonna be talking about cryptography where we talk about different cryptographic ciphers. We're gonna deal with web encryption to SSL and TLS. We are also going to talk about certificates and the creation of certificates and how they actually operate. We will also talk about public key cryptography and we are also scanning and enumeration, so Nmap and dealing with Windows servers and using SNMP and LDAP and all that sort of stuff. Then we're gonna be talking about penetration where we deal with different ways of getting into systems and also go over using Metasploit, which is an exploit framework. And we're gonna talk about how to use Metasploit and you actually get into systems and make use of the exploits that they have. Then we're gonna talk about malwares, viruses and worms and rootkits and all of that sort of stuff. We're gonna take a look at the different pieces of malware and how you would pull that apart in order to understand what is doing and potentially make use of that malware during an ethical hacking engagement. Then we're gonna talk about different types of denial of service attacks or DOS attacks and the difference between a denial of service attack and a distributed denial of service attack. And there is a difference there. So we're going to go over those attacks. Now, we're also going to go over web application hacking and the types of tools that you would use during web application hacking and the different vulnerabilities that web applications have and how to make use of these exploits and those vulnerabilities. We're gonna talk about wireless networking, how to probe wireless networks, what wireless networks are doing and how to secure wireless networks. We're also going to talk a little bit about detection evasion. And to be honest with you, detection evasion kind of comes up in a lot of different areas through the many of the topics that we're also going to talk about programming, programming attacks, and how to protect oneself against programming attacks. Okay, so that was the number of topics that we are actually going to cover through this video. Now, the approach that I'm going to be taking in the series of videos is whenever possible, we're going to be going to use a hands-on approach. So we're going to show you the actual tools I'm going to make use of and the tools to do some sort of demonstration and how they actually work. I am a big believer in getting your hands dirty as the best way to learn anything. So as we go through the series of videos, I strongly encourage you to get access to the tools that I'm going to be demonstrating wherever possible and dig in and get your hands dirty along with me. And there are places where we're going to be going over some theoretical material. And I'm not a big fan of PowerPoint slides, but sometimes they're a necessary evil in order to convey certain types of information. So wherever possible, I'm going to minimize their use, but you will run across places where they're just a necessity. And we're going to have to go through some slides where in order to get some particular points across, they are primarily of a theoretical nature. So that's the approach that we'll be taking through this video. And I hope you have fun as you go along the way. Okay, so let's begin. Now, the first topic that we're gonna tackle is what is hacking? Okay, so let us take a trip to the early days of hacking to start with. Now, the Internet Engineering Task Force is responsible for maintaining documentation about protocols and various specification and processes and procedures regarding anything on the internet. They have a series of documents called the request for comments or the RFCs. And according to RFC 1389, it says, a hacker is a person who delights in having an intimate understanding of the internal workings of a system computers and computer networks in particular. While the expression hackers may go back a long time and have many different connotations or definitions, as far as computers go, 
Some of the earliest hackers were members of the Tech Model Railroad Club at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And what those people did and the various things that they did and were involved in are detailed in Stephen Levy's book called Hackers for Our Purposes. Now, for our purposes, we'll be talking about other types of hackers. Although the spirit of what we do goes back to those early days, now the definition of hacking or hackers has changed particularly in the 1980s and in part as a result of a couple of people, namely Robert T. Morris, who was a Cornell graduate, who unleashed a piece of software that was called a worm on what was an early version of the internet worm, went on to cause a lot of damage and create a lot of downtime on systems across the country and across the world. Now, the Morris worm did end up resulting in something good, however, that is the computer emergency response team at Carnegie Mellon was created primarily in response to the Morris worm. Now, there's also Kevin Mitnick, who is another well-known hacker who was responsible for various acts of computer crime over a couple of decades. He was the first convicted in 1988. So the definition of hacker or hacking moved from something benign to something far more sinister in popular culture. Now, we see hacking or hackers in all sorts of popular culture. We've seen them in hacker movies called War Games, also the movie Hackers. Of course, you also see it in the Matrix movies, where you can see, if you look really closely, that they are using a tool called Nmap, which we will get into the use of in great detail later on as we go on. Now, also the movie Sneakers and the movie Swordfish, and on television, in addition to other places, you can see the agents at NCIS regularly doing things like cracking complex cryptography in just a matter of seconds or minutes. So what is hacking really? Well, hacking is about a deep understanding of something particularly with relation to computers and computing. It's also about exploring and the joy of learning new things and understanding them very clearly and being able to manipulate those things in ways that maybe other people haven't before. It's also about digging into problems to find out solutions in creative and interesting ways, and sometimes finding problems where there weren't problems previously. And that's a little bit about what is hacking. Okay, so now that we have talked about what exactly is hacking and how the meaning and connotations of that word has changed over time, how it came into existence, how it was coined, Let's go over the reasons that people normally hack. Now, you may want to hack just for fun. As discussed previously, hacking is a tradition that goes back several decades at MIT, even preceding the computer-related definition of hacking. Now, MIT has a long and storied history of hacking, and sometimes of a computer-related nature, which in this case happens to be true, and sometimes of a non-computer-related nature instance. Now, here you can see that MIT's homepage has been hacked or you might even say defaced to indicate that Disney is buying MIT. This was an April Fool's Day prank in 1998. And again, this is just the kind of hacking that you would do for fun rather. Now, sometimes you might want to hack just to prove a political point or any point for that matter. In this case, again, Bill Gates had donated some money to the MIT, which allowed them to have a new building. And he was coming to MIT to visit and give a talk about Microsoft Windows and its systems. And as you can see, the, the Windows systems that were installed in the entryway at the building were hacked to be running Linux instead. And you can see here that Tux the Penguin is saying, welcome to the William H. Gates building. Again, that some students who decided that they wanted to make a point about Linux and Microsoft and Windows to Bill Gates, and they thought hacking was the best way to go about it. Sometimes you hack just for the challenge. Here's an example again at MIT, where some students turned the facade of a building into a Tetris game board. Now, this was a reasonably difficult hack, and the students went after it just for the challenge of completing it. And it just so they could have some pride of ownership and to be able to say that they were able to pull this off. You know, the things that teenagers do to show off to other teenagers, it just increases with increase in scale. Now, in spite of its difficulties and its challenges and all the obstacles and planning that had to go into it, they were able to pull it off and now they have those bragging rights. So that was one of them and one of the instances where somebody would hack just for the challenge and for the fun in it. Now, sometimes you want to hack to prevent theft and this is where we get more specifically into computer related hackings 
You see a lot of articles and stories in the news over the last few years about cybercrime. And here's an example of data theft compromised. And a few than one and a half million cards for global payments. So there are some attackers who got into this company, Global Payment, and they were able to pull out about a million and a half credit card numbers during the intrusion there. So what you may want to do is you may want to learn how to hack in order to find these holes in your systems or applications or employer systems so that you can fix these holes and prevent these compromises from happening because of the reputational hit that your company takes wherever things like these happen. You have the risk of completely running out of business. So just to protect your job, to protect your company and to protect your own desire of business, you may just want to learn to hack and that's a very good reason. Now, you may also want to find all the problems that exist in your system before putting them out and deploying them so that you can keep these attackers from getting in and stealing critical or sensitive information. Sometimes you may want to hack to get there before the bad guys. And the same sort of idea is the last one where we're just going to talk about and that exactly is ethical hacking. Now, we were just talking about how sometimes you may want to hack into your own system before publishing it out to the public. Let's take Internet Explorer, for example. Now, Internet Explorer was actually published to the public with some critical error in the code, and these flaws were heavily exploited by people who actually found them. Now, a number of people in the world go out looking for these flaws, and they call themselves security researchers, and they get in touch with the vendors after they found a flaw or a bug and work with the vendors to get it fixed. What they end up with is a bit of reputation. They get a name for themselves and that name recognition may end up getting them a job or some speaking engagements or book deal or any number of ways that you could cash in on some name recognition from finding these sort of bugs and getting them fixed. If you want to get there before the bad guys, you may think you're helping out a vendor. You may want to just make a name for yourself. You may want to find these sort of bugs before the bad guys do because thing about the bad guys finding them is they don't announce them and they don't get them fixed and that makes everybody a little less secure. Finally, you may want to protect yourself from hacked computer companies and fight cyber criminals. And this is a new headline from June 18, 2012. And we're starting to see these sort of news headlines show up as companies are starting to retaliate against attackers in order to retaliate against attackers. Now, in order to retaliate against attackers, you need to be able to have the same sort of skills and techniques and knowledge and experience that those attackers have and where your company may want you to learn to hack or the company may want to bring in people who are skilled at these sort of activities so that they can attack the attackers and hopefully you end up with more steely exterior and you get a reputation for not being a company that people want to go after those are several reasons. And there we go. I gave you around a bunch of reasons as to why you may want to hack for fun, to prove a point, to protect yourself, to protect the company, to not run out of business and along with another bunch of reasons. OK, so now that we have talked about why you would want to hack, let's move on to the types of hackers that exist. Now, we're going to be talking about the different types of hacking. And the first type of hacking that I want to discuss is ethical hacking and ethical hackers, which is really what we're going to be talking about through the rest of these lessons. Now, an ethical hacker is somebody who thinks like a black hat hacker or thinks like somebody who's intent on breaking into your systems, but follows a moral compass that's more in line with probably the majority of the population. So their intent isn't to do bad things. Their intent is to look for bad things and get them fixed so that bad things don't happen. Ethical hackers aren't out to destroy anything and they're not out to break anything unless it's deemed to be acceptable as a part of the engagement and also necessary in order to demonstrate a particular vulnerability to the organization that they're working with. So that's an ethical hacker and there's a certification that's available from the EC Council. It's a certified ethical hacker and you know if you find certifications valuable and this sort of thing is what you want to do for seeing a certified ethical hacker may be something you might want to look into. Now let's talk about black hat hacker. There's plenty of cases of black hat hackers through years and let's talk about a guy in particular called Kevin Mitnick. This guy right here is a particularly good example probably because he was a black hat hacker for a lot of his years. His goal was to cause mischief, 
to steal where necessary and just to be engaged in the lifestyle of being a hacker and doing whatever was necessary to continue doing whatever it crossed doing whatever he was doing it crossed moral boundaries or ethical boundaries and so kevin mitnick here was involved for well over a decade in computer crime and was finally picked up by the fbi and he was charged and prosecuted and he was eventually convicted of some of the activities that he was involved with now you may be able to argue that kevin is a gray hat hacker and as well and a gray hat hacker is somebody who kind of skirts the line between black and white hat hacking and white hat hacking is really what an ethical hacker is so instead of saying ethical hacker you could say white hat hacker it's the same idea a white hat hacker is somebody who hacks for good if you want to think of it like that if you want to think of it as a good versus evil and what they're really doing is they're in it for the technical challenge they're looking to make things better make things more efficient improve them in some way on the other hand a black hat hacker is out for the money for the thrill it's really a criminal activity and a gray hat hacker is somebody who may employ the tactics and technique of a black hat hacker but have sort of a white hat focus in other words they're going to do things that may be malicious and destructive in nature but the reason they're doing it is to improve the security posture of an organization that they are working with so you can see there's actually a book called gray hat hacking it's a pretty good book and it details a lot of the tactics and strategies and techniques we'll be going over in subsequent lessons in this video now one other type of hacking that i want to talk about is a thing called hacktivism and you will find hacktivism all over the place and one example in the last year or so and certainly in recent memory is called lulz security yeah you heard that right it's called lulz security and you can argue that lulz is actually a response to another type of hacktivism an organization called anonymous started hacking companies like sony to protest their involvement in a lawsuit regarding a PlayStation 3 hacker. Now, Lull Security was supposedly protesting the treatment of Anonymous or was hacking in support of this group. Anonymous, so they hacked a number of companies and did things like pull information, usernames, and password from the databases at these companies. And they said that the reason was to shine a light on the security of these companies and also theoretically to embarrass the companies with their weak or poor security postures. And the problem with that, that they were doing this through, were posting information that they had found online. And that information often included details about customers for these particular corporations. And for an ethical hacker, a white hat hacker that would cross the boundary of causing harm. So there's no reason for me as an ethical hacker to post information in a public forum about somebody because I could be doing damage to them. But in this case, Lull Security and Anonymous specifically lull security were engaged in a form of hacktivism and what they were doing was not only damaging to the corporation that certainly was detrimental to those people so different types of hackers and different types of hacking we've got ethical or white hat hacking we've got black hat gray hat and then we've finally got hacktivism it's really the goal and the means that vary from one to the other okay so now that we've discussed the types of hackers let's also discuss the skills necessary to become one so what we're going to discuss in this part are the different skills that are required or will be learned as a part of this video so initially just for basic computing you need a basic understanding of operating systems and how to work them there are going to be several fundamental types of tasks that i won't be going into any detail at all or and you'll need to know how to run programs and do things like open up a command prompt without me walking you through and how to do that so i am going to assume that you have some basic understanding of how to do these sorts of tasks also, you need an understanding of the basic system software and you'll need a basic understanding of how to use command line utilities. There are a number of tools and programs that we're going to be going through this video and many of them use the command line. Now, whether it's on Windows or Linux, you'll need to be familiar with typing and being able to run programs from the command line and the various command line switches and parameters that those programs or types of programs are going to use. Now, from a networking perspective, you need a basic understanding of some simple networking concepts. You need to know what cables are and switches and hubs and how systems are networked together. You don't really need a deep level of understanding. I'll be going through some protocols at a reasonably deep level because I think it's important as an ethical hacker to understand what's going on at the protocol level so that you can know better what you are doing and how to achieve the goals and tasks that you have before you. 
So we're going to be going over some protocols. So just understanding what protocols are and how they go together. Those sort of things are necessary from a networking perspective. Now we're going to also be learning a bunch of life skills. Yes, there are some life skills that it's important to have. I think the most important one is the ability to accept failure and persevere. And by that, I mean, you're going to be just running across several things that just don't work the first time around. And it's going to take a little bit of time and stick to itiveness to plug away and keep going until you get something to work. And the way that you get things to work is having an ability to problem solve. And sometimes solving problems requires being a little creative. Sometimes you need to think out of the box and come at a problem from a different perspective in order to find a solution. Throughout the course of this video, you're going to run across a lot of sticky problems through the course of learning about being an ethical hacker and just doing the work because it's not as simple. So here's a little recipe for how to do this. Now go follow this recipe every time and you're going to be successful. Every situation is different. Every system is different. You're going to run across some pretty sticky problems and you're going to have to just wait and get your hands dirty and keep failing and failing and failing and failing until you find a way to succeed. So I think those skills are very necessary to learn how to be an ethical hacker, digging through some of the material that we'll be going over in this video. As far as what you're going to be learning, you're going to be learning about how to use a lot of tools. You're going to learn networking. And by that, I mean, we're going to be talking about different protocols that are involved in networking systems together. You're going to learn about security and security postures. Security is the heart and soul of ethical hacking. It's why we do ethical hacking in order to make systems and networks more secure than they were previously. That's the goal from a networking perspective. We're going to be talking about how to read packets from network captures. We're going to be going into TCP IP related protocols in a fairly significant amount of detail. And you're going to understand how protocols interact with one another. So we're going to do all that and the reading packets is going to be really important and we're going to do a fair amount of that in addition to just a fundamental approach to learning how to read packets in several lessons. We're going to read packets as a way of understanding the different tools that we're using and how they're going to learn tactics and methodologies and you get to learn to use the information you've gathered in order to get more information and information is really what is this all about. You can't do much anything without information and sometimes it takes a fair bit of digging in order to find that information and what you're going to learn is the entry points and the stepping stones to get the information that you need and then once you have that information you're going to be learning about ways to exploit it in order to get deeper into the target you're going to learn security awareness we're going to talk about risk and understanding risks and vulnerabilities Primarily recognize the difference between a vulnerability and an exploit and there's a significant difference There's so security awareness and understanding what a risk is and how that impacts your target and it's going to be key to a lot of things that we talked about So it sounds like a lot. We're going to cover a fair bit of ground not all of it at a deep level Sometimes we're going to skim the surface, but there's an awful lot of material to be covered So let's get started into talking about the different skills that are required or will be learned as a part of the series of video. So initially, just for basic computing, you need a basic understanding of operating systems. So it sounds like a lot we're, that we're gonna cover and a fair bit of it is gonna be at a very deep level and sometimes we're just gonna skip the surface, but there's an awful lot of material to cover. So let's get started. Okay, so that was all about the skills that uh, we are going to develop throughout this video and that might be necessary for you to become an ethical hacker. 